Hello there and welcome to the Paragons of Klaxi on flexible difficulty in the Siege of Ogrimmar. First of all, I'm not even going to explain the order of which you have to kill them, it's always different and I always leave it up to our uh, raid leader to decide which ones to kill. Something that is important to know is that the boss fight consists of nine different bosses and you have to kill the bosses one at a time because when you kill one of them the rest of them get all of their health back. So it's really important to take them down one at a time. Recall the Dissector is the first boss that we take down and uh, allegedly he has some ability that uh, spawns worms of some kind and I am not actually sure what these worms do I guess they they take ticking damage on everyone because every time on flex we kill him so fast that we never see these worms the next boss we usually take down is scare the blood seeker and this boss has an ability in which he spawns two different blood adds and it's really important that you take down these blood adds before they reach the boss group. Because as soon as they reach the boss group they start to heal. So it's important for the DPSs to take down the bloods as soon as you po just possibly can. When Bloodseeker has died we are basically just waiting for the next boss to arrive. And this boss is called Corvin the Prime. And Corvin the Prime's main ability is that he puts up a big block of amber that kind of looks like my mage's ice block, but it's really big and really orange. And when he does this ability, it is really, really, really important that every DPS starts to kill the amber and not the boss. Because the amber heals Corvin the Prime up to full health. So if you don't kill the Amber in time, Corvin the Prime will get full health again and that is not good. The next boss we kill is Hisek the Swarm Keeper and he has an ability that uh, is called Aim. And when he does this ability he aims on a player that is punted back into the room. And then he is targeted with a beam and it is important that some players, not all players, but some players stand in the beam. Because after a couple of seconds the beam kind of explodes and if there are people standing inside of the beam the damage are dealt is split in between the players. If no one stands in the beam the player that was aimed will probably most likely die because he, w because he or she will get all the damage at once. All the bosses have different abilities on them and as soon as they die you can click on their corpses and get their abilities for yourself. And since there are 9 corpses I think there should be 9 different abilities. And I'm not quite sure about all the other abilities. What I do know is my own ability and that is, and that ability is on Swarm Keeper. As soon as Swarm Keeper dies I go up to him and click on his corpse and then I get an ability that is called Aim. And what that ability does is that I aim on one of the bosses, preferably the one that you are going to kill. After a couple of seconds I shoot the boss and he gets a, somewhat of a debuff so that he takes more damage for a couple of seconds and this is a really good ability. This ability has a 2 minute cooldown so it's really important that you use it as soon as possible. Every time the cooldown goes down, use it again on the next boss. The next boss that we take down is Kasros the Locust and he has two different abilities that you should watch out for. The first one is called Flash. When Mr. Locust does this he runs around and targets random players and he leaves a green path after him. All the players that are caught in his path are afflicted by a kind of a whirling ability and this ability does a heck of a lot of damage on you and you're also basically stunned. I figured out though that if you're a mage you can basically blink out of it so uh, if you're stunned by flash just try blink and you'll probably get out of it. The next ability that Locust does is an ability called Hurl Amber and it's basically these huge big blobs of uh, yellow goo that's on the floor and basically he jumps up on a ledge and tosses bombs at you that leaves these huge puddles and it's pretty obvious that you should not stand in these puddles at all because you take a huge amount of damage if you do. 
Caustic the Manipulator is a really annoying boss because his ability has is just such a horrible pain in the fucking ass. He has an ability that uh, places uh, hungry Kuchongs. Uh, we usually call them hungry, hungry hippos. And these are summoned on the outside ring. You can probably see them flying around. And when they have the yellow orb around them, they are inactive. But as soon as uh, the yellow orb disappears from them, they become active and, and very, very hungry. Any player that stands too close to them will become mesmerized. And the player will just start going towards this uh, hungry, hungry Kuchong. You can't do anything. You, you can shoot the Kuchong yourself, but you can't control your movement. You're just going to go up to the Kuchong until he eats you. And when he eats you, you insta-die. So when this happens, make sure that everyone shoots the Kuchong as fast as you possibly can. When the Kuchong's health pool is down to about 30%, the Kuchong lets you go and you can go back to doing your normal damaging or healing or tanking abilities. If you have priests in your group, you can pull the player back a little bit and that's really good because it gives you more time to kill the Kuchong. When the Kuchongs feed on you, they gain energy and as soon as they reach full energy, they will uh, molt, so to say, and they begin a, a process of transforming into a full-fledged grown-up Kuchong and you do not want this to happen because they are big, nasty, and they do a uh, fuck load balls of damage. Eo Cook the Lucid is the next boss that we attack, and he has an attack called Calculate, and I don't really know what Calculate does. It's a preemptive calculation for his attack, Fiery Edge. He gives you a random color, red, purple, blue, green, or yellow, or a number which range from 1 to 5, or a shape in, in the form of a sword, a staff, a drum, or a bomb. Yeah, you see, I don't even understand what the fuck I'm talking about. But basically what he does is that he looks through his calculations and then he uses Fiery Edge. And depending on which player got what color, what kind of shape, and color a big red beam spawns in between the players that are affected by the right kind of criteria. It's important for not anyone to stand in between the lines because if you do you take a lot of fire damage and everyone that gets this line uh, connected to them should run away as far as possible from each other and the further away each player are from each other the chain gets weaker and does less and less damage. And after a couple of seconds, the chain disappears by itself. The next boss that we take down is Zaril the Poisoned Mind. He he has an, a really annoying ability that basically he injects players with different kinds of uh, vials of goo. And you, you get a debuff on you that is called red, blue or yellow. For example, when he activates the red one, everyone that has the red debuff will explode after a couple of seconds. And it's really, I cannot stress enough how important it is that everyone with the red debuff runs out of the group. Because if, if either, if just one person explodes inside of the group, then everyone takes an insane amount of damage. And it's just so horrible. Any and all players that has the yellow debuff, as soon as that is activated, it's also important to run out. Because after a couple of seconds, you leave a kind of a little area of, of yellow goo. And if you stand in the goo, you take a lot of damage. So uh, it's it's not good if you're grouped together and you leave the puddle of or yellow goo in the middle so all everyone take damage. It's... It's more important to run out if you have the red one, but it's it's fairly important to run out if you have the, the yellow one also. Every player that has blue catalyst will explode for a big chunk of damage. And I'm not quite sure if it's just the players that have the catalyst or if it's all the players that has to clump up together because the damage is split. It's kind of like a cleave ability. If you have the blue debuff and you are alone when it hits, you will take all the damage yourself and you will die. And finally we come to the last boss, whose name is Killrock the Wind Reaver. 
He has an attack that's called Exposed Veins, and this attack makes players more vulnerable to uh, the attacks of Zeril the Poison Mind. This ability stacks, and every time a player is targeted, the damage taken on Zeril the Poison Mind is increased by 10%, and that goes for each application of the Exposed Veins. He also has an attack that's called Death from Above, and when he does this attack, it, you basically, he just targets a random player, and uh, when he does this and he targets you, you just run away from the area in which he attacks. If you're standing in the area where he attacks, he will, well, basically, he'll deal a hell of a lot of damage. But if you move from the area, you might take some splash damage, but basically, if you don't stand in the area, you're fine. And that is a very basic and hopefully understandable tactic in how to defeat the Paragons of Klaxi on flexible difficulty.